Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. Welcome to the Video Game Fight School channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. So, there is an elephant in the room that continues to rear its head, and I wanted to go ahead and piggyback off something uh, or a set of sentiments a content creator in this community pretty much shared. Uh, first of all, shout out to Slick Moth. One of the reasons I started the Video Game Fight School channel was because of his work in this community so i have to give credit where credit is due he made a video saying that he felt that we were going to be seeing a gotham knight that has received a huge transformation from what we saw in the trailers because it seemed like some elements uh were in a sense close to being uh related to and i say related <laughs> in a very careful way to marvel's avengers and nobody wants any kind of semblance in that sense he also mentioned a few things about Tom Clancy's The Division and The Division Game and Destiny. And I felt that I needed to kind of just chime in with that. First of all, he mentioned something about categorizing them in a similar light. And I wanted to quickly say as a Division player, I've played The Division for about six, four, six years, five years. Yes, about. And I actually have, uh, you know, an entire coverage section on YouTube for that game. The Division is actually closer related to a game like Diablo than it is Destiny. Because of the elements in terms of RPG, it is actually also related to both games in terms of their lore and narrative. The Division tells its narrative in a futuristic world. Uh, Destiny tells its lore in its fantasy world in a sense. So these are some highlights. You will like The Division story, whoever you are. Even if you may not adore it or be head over heels for it, it is still a story that they've managed to actually make in a relatable world that we live in. Also, the structure of the game is very different, which brings us to the Gotham Knights conversation. So what do you think the structure of Gotham Knights is going to look like? Are you in the boat that thinks, man, I'm worried I sense Avengers-esque type deal? Or I'm worried we may not be uh, in a place where we get some of the original aspects, the traditional aspects of the way the Arkham games have been delivered. Or we might get something that may not be Avengers-esque, but have that tone. Uh, along the way of the game and so there's different you know mindsets in terms of you know how we think this game is going to show up but at the end of the day i think there's something that we really have to look at in saying okay what do we as fans want what game is comparable to this project that's gotham knights that we would love to see uh you know out there when the game is released i think the answer is very simple uh, the answer is basically you want a structure like the other Arkham games. Now, in this community, there are people who are in the, along the minds of, well, you know, forget Arkham. Arkham is, uh, it has had its own run. We want to see something new with Gotham Knights. But here's the truth. The new that you want, you may not necessarily like. Because, you see, Gotham Knights is a game that, you know, is going to be riding on the coattails of the success of the Arkham games. There is no feigning it. There is no, in my opinion anyways, there's no new idea anymore that we can really explore on the mainstream in video games. The reason is not because new ideas should not be pursued. The reason is because old ideas have been proven to be aesthetically pleasing, uh, experientially uh, satisfying, I guess, if I want to throw out a few, uh, you know, <laughs> allegories there. But that's what it is. I mean, the reason Marvel Spider-Man 2018 was a good game was because it kept those core aspects of a solid game with a narrative that didn't have to deal with you getting gear or whatever but just following a classic xp system this is what's made the arkham games and i think that's exactly what many players want even though they want it in a whole different skin and i hope the developers are aware of this because you look at the gameplay and you see the way there was like the XP system and the gear system. It really was a little concerning for some people, especially after the Avengers fiasco. There is no getting away from it. When you see gear in a game, you expect the Division type game. The Division, yes, even though it may be more Diablo-like, it is a huge gear game that will keep you grinding for thousands of hours if you don't pay attention to your time. And I can tell you, I can attest to that as a testament of the work that I've done covering the game and playing the game over a number of years. And I think players are averse to that. And this is why this conversation is always rearing its head up everywhere. Any corner you turn, there's a, com there's a conversation about the structure of the game. And I think that's basically it. A simple setup structure, good guys, bad guys. If you want to make a living world system, you can make a living world system. Now, here's the challenge. 
a lot of people say they would like the continuity in the division in uh, Gotham Knights. You know, some some sort of continuity where you can actually travel around the open world, where you can actually go around beating bad guys. Now, in the Division Two, that's actually a reality. It's called a living world system. Now, you have all kinds of stuff around the open world. You have good guys roaming around. You have bad guys roaming around. You have all kinds of stuff. In fact, what I'll do here in this particular footage here that I'm actually recording, I'm going to make my way out to the open world so you can see exactly what I mean. In different spots in the world, what happens is good guys and bad guys and even allies and enemies continue to spawn all around the clock. In fact, they spawn in specific locations called control points and then they spawn in missions of some kind of activity mission or sometimes they're just random patrols and this is entirely around the world of a map that is actually scaled as a one-to-one -one representation of dc now we also know that you know gotham knights is using five boroughs it's going to have a big expansive map so this is something that you know we're going to be looking at nobody wants that map well most people don't want that map to be empty so how can you integrate the busyness of the map into the gameplay without some kind of a progression system? This is going to be a very hard task for the developers to go ahead and answer because, you know, it is something that everybody has got to kind of grapple with. Because at the end of the day, you know, when you think about it, look, the enemies over here, they're going to be messing with me. I'm going to be taking them out. I'm basically going to stay in cover and I'm just going to do my thing. It's not going to be too hard. Like, you know, I just kind of automate the way the game works. Uh, with my build and with my skills and my items that I use. And this is really a fun part of the game, too. It's one of those things that we do. But you really have to kind of tie it to progression so that people are not just monotonously running around an open world that's expansive, that has enemies and bad guys, that has quests and, you know, people who need help. Uh, you know, we saw some civilians in that game, right? You're not going to want to just do that and then just leave everybody just to, you know, go ahead and not have any consequence in terms of your XP, in terms of your gear, in terms of your progression, in terms of your player power. These are things that game developers and designers have to answer when they're making these games. So even though we may say, OK, we would love for this game to have that traditional structure, we have to be aware that we cannot eat our cake, uh, you know, and have it. You know, if you want the traditional gameplay system, then you can't necessarily have, in my opinion anyways, enjoyment from the open world and the expansive world and some of the benefits that they have with them or drawbacks. But if you do want the traditional system, what you're going to get is not really the open world, but a controlled sandbox. And when I say a controlled sandbox, I mean it, it would look like an open world, but there are limitations to where it is that you can go. On this map, there are almost no limitations in a sense. I mean, yeah, they are, but it's such an expansive map. It takes you about 10 minutes to run across from one end to the other, 10 minutes in regular time. But you will encounter all kinds of bad guys. You would have to run around. So that time would probably be much longer. If you set the open world on a harder difficulty, which you can do in this game structure, you can change the global difficulty. It will probably run you much longer for you to be able to pull off something like that. Now, Gotham Knights, you'll be, you know, zipping and zapping. Look, they're bad guys here. They're patrolling. Uh, you know, you'll be zipping and zapping all through the map and all of that, you know, basically using your grapple or maybe even your vehicle systems. So there also have to be a whole different structure regarding that open world setup, because if you can ride your bikes to a location where there's a bad guy or, you know, an enemy or whatever, you know, you really have to also respect the fact that that enemy is in a position where, OK, I mean, what, what is the you know, what is the enemy trying to do? Are they trying to take over a place? Is there a lair that they have or whatever it is? Or are there good guys that need your help? So are those good guys asking you to break into some location? Are they standing in a shop like Spider-Man where they'll be in a shop, right? And they'll be like, oh, Spider-Man, my cat was missing. I need you guys to, I need you to please help me with this. These are the questions that you have to ask. And they all go into what gameplay, uh, open world or controlled open world design is. But a living world system won't be bad nonetheless. I really would love them to implement one of them, but also implement it in a way that it doesn't really make the game feel grindy. So in that sense, they'll have to come up with creative ways or at the best, scrap that whole system and just keep the classic system the way it is. You can still make the world alive. You can still make hidden, you know, uh, you can make all kinds of hidden clues, uh, hidden puzzles, hidden, um, you know, missions, secret Easter eggs, you know, collectibles, all those things that can stretch gameplay for a lot of hours and still support DLC according to that tradition. But again, I just want to make aware that 
the game structure is going to be a very big challenge for the developers because they've already made some promises. They've already made some statements. They've already made some, uh, I don't know if I'll call them conclusions, but if I, they've made some, uh, you know, mm, allusions, let's put it that way, as to how we're going to be seeing the game come to fruition. So these are some of the things that we really do have to talk about and really consider when we're looking at, you know, the task ahead and what it is that we're asking for, because we may be asking for a lot more than we actually envision. But again, I trust them to kind of make the best decisions for them themselves as developers, what game they're willing to support. And based on the decision of the or at least the desires of their fans as a whole. All right. That's it for me in this particular conversation. I really hope I've been able to just kind of provide a little bit more clarity as to, you know, some of the things that could benefit if they took it from other games or could be detri detrimental if they actually go with it uh, and not follow up in a very smooth and clean way by realizing the, the kind of task that they're taking on. And I hope that you guys are able to comment and just share your own thoughts, um, you know, across the board. I would love to hear what you think about this entire conversation. Thank you very much for indulging me. I appreciate you guys so much. Hopefully we'll talk in another video. Peace out.